On today's episode, we learn something new about the Tesla Cybertruck, a major new update to Tesla's big battery in Australia, SpaceX explains how they are making Starlink invisible, and Tesla owners are going to space. There's a lot to get into, so let's get going. Some very interesting news just came out about the Tesla Cybertruck that is changing expectations about the vehicle's design. It's not another adjustment by Tesla, but actually a wind test of the Cybertruck's angular body shape. It turns out that the Cybertruck will actually be pretty aerodynamic, for a pickup truck at least. This company called Numeric Systems decided to load an approximate model of the Tesla Cybertruck into their aerodynamic simulation technology to see how the unconventional design would fare. The software uses algorithms to simulate wind and calculate a drag coefficient in something called a transient vortex visualization. Most full-sized pickup trucks have a pretty lousy aerodynamic rating of between 0.55 and 0.65. Now, according to this simulation test, the Tesla Cybertruck should rate around a 0.39 drag coefficient. To put that into perspective, the latest Model X design has a drag coefficient of 0.24, and the Model S Plaid is down at 0.208. So, all things considered, the Cybertruck is apparently much more aerodynamic than we would have believed. Even those of us who are not engineers will still know that a flat surface will generate more drag than a curved surface, right? And to get a little more technical, it's generally true that a sharp edge will break up an air wave, which will cause turbulence. This is typically referred to as detachment. And the Cybertruck has plenty of hard surfaces and hard angles. Even Elon Musk himself told Joe Rogan about a year ago that the Cybertruck would not be aerodynamic because of the angular design. Elon basically said he just did it because it looks cool, not because there's any advantage to the shape. The engineers at Numeric Systems are now finding that, all things considered, the Cybertruck designers did a pretty good job at making this steel brick cut through the air. According to CFD engineer Alex Lazaro Pratt, Contrary to what people would think, the sharp edge of the roof does not produce a big detachment. It is true that the flow is not attached, but in fact the air follows down the slope quite seamlessly. The boundary layer does not substantially grow. This is quite remarkable and a big aerodynamic advantage compared to other pickup trucks. Moreover, the diffuser makes a substantial effect in the center of the vehicle's rear end. It creates suction and reduces the wake. Now, that's not to say the design is perfect. They did find turbulence created at the nose of the truck, where the hood meets the bumper, and quite a lot of turbulence is being generated along the sides of the vehicle by the chunky protectors around the wheel wells and the hard edge of the A-pillar between the windshield and the side windows. Of course, the company doesn't have a real-life finished Cybertruck to pull measurements from, they've just eyeballed it from the vast supply of Cybertruck images out there on the web. The proportions do look pretty spot on, though they have chosen to omit the side view mirrors and windshield wiper from their digital model, so we don't know what kind of effect those accessories might have overall. Elon commented on this a few years back, if we go all the way to November 2019, he wrote on Twitter, with extreme effort, Cybertruck might hit a 0.3 drag coefficient, which would be insane for a truck, requires tweaking, many small details. So that's a good sign that the digital model is in the ballpark with the prototype design, and Elon also followed up to say, quote, overall shape is good for low drag coefficient, matters a lot exactly how you trip airflow at edges and guide air around wheels, like an invisible sculpture, end quote which is also in line with what the model found as well. The hard edges and the wheel wells are going to be the trickiest part, but there is still plenty of opportunity to improve as they move towards the final design. Tesla has rolled out a new production in their line of energy regulating software, and this one is called Virtual Machine Mode. What the hell does that mean? Well, this is another piece of software that is run on Tesla's grid scale energy storage products like the Power Pack and Mega Pack. 
AutoBidder is a great example of this. It's an AI-powered trading platform that buys and sells energy at the ideal times to maximize profits. It tells the mega packs to load up on energy when it is cheap and abundant, and then dole it out when the demand and pricing are high. Basically, like stock trading, but with energy. Anyways, this new virtual machine software will help Tesla's grid scale battery storage facilities function more like a traditional power plant. This new update tackles one very specific problem, the battery's lack of inertia. So in any of our traditional power plants like hydroelectric, coal, nuclear, the process of creating electricity will include the use of mechanical generators. Whenever the power gets cut off in one of those systems, the generators still have a bit of mechanical energy, some inertia left in the spin, so the power tapers off slowly. It's like if a car runs out of gas, it will still coast for a good while on its momentum. A mechanical engine doesn't just slam to a halt when it loses power. And we experience this sometimes with our electricity when the power fluctuates a bit. Like, during a thunderstorm, you sometimes see the lights dim and flicker, but then come back without going completely dead. This is thanks to inertia. Batteries don't do that. The flow of electricity from a fully electric system is either on or off. So you wouldn't get that fluctuation. It would just be an abrupt kick from the lights on to the lights off to the lights back on again, and that's the kind of thing that is likely to explode every electronic device that you've plugged into the grid. And this is the problem that Tesla's new software will fix. Tesla has devised the virtual machine mode to mimic this machine-like inertia. From Tesla's description, the Megapax inverters work with the new program to take the excess power during peak times and use it to even out the dips whenever conditions drop the power levels. This makes the grid much more stable without having to add any additional machinery to compensate. This is being rolled out for the first time at Tesla's original big battery, the Hornsdale Power Reserve in South Australia. I know this might not sound like a big deal, but it actually is a really big advancement for making green energy work on a grid scale, and people in the industry are really excited about it. The new French company that owns the Hornsdale Power Reserve put out this statement on the new software saying, quote, this landmark achievement is the result of two years of extensive trials and intensive collaboration between Neowen and battery technology provider Tesla, working closely with South Australia's network operator. Together, they completed the necessary studies, testing, and analysis to deploy the pioneering technology at scale for the first time. SpaceX is sharing how they are working to make their network of Starlink satellites less bright in the night sky, which is an often repeated criticism of the satellite internet devices that they obscure the ability of ground-based telescopes to observe the galaxy. In a new document called Brightness Mitigation Best Practices for Satellite Operations, SpaceX noted through collaboration with the astronomy community it has identified and mitigated the key causes of satellite brightness. The company is working on making the satellites invisible to the naked eye when they are at their standard operational altitude. Basically, satellites don't emit any light themselves, but they do reflect light from the sun. That reflection can either be specular or diffuse. A specular reflection is like when the sun shimmers off the top of a lake, very bright, pointed, concentrated reflections. A diffuse reflection is the kind that doesn't make you squint when you see it, a broad, even scattering of light. So it's the specular surface reflections that SpaceX is focusing on. Those are visible from the ground when sunlight bounces off either the main body or the solar panel array. There are two main strategies to mitigating reflections. Sun visors that absorb light and dielectric mirrors that scatter light away from the Earth. Unfortunately for the sun visors, they've proven to be incompatible with the new optical laser-based communication system between satellites. They just block the signal, so those are out. But SpaceX has an alternative. Mirror films that are transparent to radio frequencies. The film scatters most of the sunlight away from the Earth. SpaceX said that it has been improving its mirror films to direct even less light back to the Earth. 
the second generation of Starlink satellites, which are still in development, will use a dielectric mirror film. This updated version reduces the observed brightness 10 times better than the first gen film by using a bi-directional reflectance distribution function metric. This maximizes the film's scatter of specular reflections, breaking them up with multiple thin layers that create interference patterns in the light. What's more, SpaceX plans to offer the dielectric mirror film as a product on the Starlink website. This is to help other satellite makers reduce their own light pollution signature. The film will be offered at a cost and all operators will be able to use it to reduce the effect of their own constellations. Tesla is preparing to launch pictures of its customers to the moon on an upcoming SpaceX Lunar Orbiter mission with the Korea Aerospace Research Institute. If you remember back to 2018, Tesla had a referral program to help them sell more vehicles. Owners could share a referral code with new buyers who would receive supercharging credits. In exchange, referrers would get prizes based on how many people they referred. One of those prizes was to have your picture launched into deep space. At the time, Tesla described this on their website, we'll laser etch any image onto glass and send it into deep space orbit for millions of years. Refer more friends while you wait for an alien race to discover your payload. Most people likely just kind of forgot about that one, but not Tesla and SpaceX. They've just been waiting for the perfect opportunity to send the images. And that time will come on August 4th, when the Korean satellite rides a Falcon 9 rocket to the moon. What's also unexpected is the delivery method for the hundreds of submitted photos. They've all been formed into one giant mosaic image of the famous Starman astronaut flying Elon Musk's red Tesla Roadster through space. The photos included in the mosaic range from selfies to family pictures, artwork, photos of pets. There's even a QR code in there so that the aliens can get on the internet. It's a pretty on brand for Tesla and SpaceX to do something a bit silly and outrageous like this, but it's also kind of mind blowing to think that this image is going to be out there in space for billions of years. This thing will outlast the human race. Trippy. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.